The background to the lipid nanoparticle or LNP story is an interesting one because we really didn't start off in this direction at all. We were trying to understand why, why is it that there's so many, there's literally hundreds if not thousands of different lipids in a, any, bio, any biological membrane and we don't know what the roles of all those lipids are and so that's what fascinated me. I came over to Canada after being asked by Peter to come and help him form and build a, a research group and starting to develop the, the LMP, lipid nanoparticle technology. Those basic studies on lipid polymorphism were what he later uh, started to apply so that they could be efficient packaging and efficient delivery uh, vehicles. I would say that Peter is brilliant, creative, and tenacious. It took Peter years of work on these lipid nanoparticles to ultimately get them to work. It was a brilliant discovery. In the decades that we've worked on them, we've really been able to bring them to the point where they are truly now enabling um, new therapeutics, providing life-saving, life-preserving life benefits um, for the people. About 2014, we were contacted by an immunologist at the uh, University of Pennsylvania, a guy named Drew Weissman, who said, that's really nice you're getting these, these proteins being expressed in the liver, uh, but I'd like to try this as a vaccine. Katie Carrico and I started working on mRNA about 25 years ago. We got into it because we saw there was great potential to use RNA for a variety of projects for vaccines, for therapeutic proteins, for gene therapy. Many of the new medicines that are being developed today are based on nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, um, a very targeted way of affecting gene function. But the biggest issue for advancing nucleic acid medicines is how do you achieve delivery of those molecules into the cell? And that's where lipid nanoparticles come in. When we first started delivering RNA, we tried probably around 40 different formulations. Other kinds of lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, catamers, uh, everything we could find, we tried. And the lipid nanoparticles that we got from Peter had the highest delivery efficiency and the lowest toxicity. By 2017, we have already generated a vaccine which contains the same uh, composition, same LMP, but now the messenger RNA coded for a Zika virus specific protein. And that was showing that this kind of vaccine was so powerful. And so the initial experiments were done uh, with the Zika virus uh, protein. Those results proved to be really very, very good. When the uh, pandemic hit in early 2020, um, old efforts switched to say we need to make a vaccine against the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the COVID-19 virus. I think it's interesting how quickly we forget um, how, how bad it was, how scary it was. You know, in those first few months, where we really didn't know how quickly the um, virus would spread, where we really didn't know um, how dangerous it was, and there were simply no answers to those questions. We knew we were in big trouble. We also knew that the RNA vaccine was probably gonna be very useful. It was fast, it was effective, and it was easy to make. I started talking to Acuitas saying, we're making the vaccine, are you gonna help us with this? And, they were very interested, so we started working together. Pfizer BioNTech put four variants of uh, the vaccine into an early clinical trial. All of them were using our lipid nanoparticle. So we said, wow, okay, this we're definitely in the game now. Then to see Pfizer take that gigantic bet, you know, I mean, they basically said, in addition to running the trial, we're going to scale up manufacturing at the same time. So this is where it got really exciting. Without Peter's work and, and what Peter's work led to, there wouldn't be a vaccine. 
November the 20th, I think, or, uh, of 2020, when the results for the uh, COVID-19 vaccine came out. And I was reading through that press release and the, uh, you know, the initial statement the drug was you know, 95% effective and then <clears throat> independent of age, ethnic groups, and then reasonably well tolerated. Uh, and it, I just couldn't believe it. I don't know what time of the day it was. It was probably early in the morning. I decided to have a glass of scotch and uh, to celebrate. I think the COVID-19 vaccine is a pretty good success. Three billion plus people have received the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, both of the RNA vaccines are based on the lipid nanoparticles that he helped to develop. So I think you know, half the human population has benefited from his technology. The Pfizer deal was significant for Acuitas in that it, it demonstrated the technology around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic really did promote Acuitas to another level. There's many things that Peter's work has contributed to. The, the pandemic is number one. His technology was also used for a type of transthyretin uh, amyloidosis that's used by these patients who otherwise have a few years after they get symptoms before they die. It's also used for gene therapy uh, in liver treatments delivering Cas9. It's used to deliver uh, toxic chemotherapy drugs, and it's used to deliver antifungal drugs, amphotericin. So there's so many uses of Peter's technology. I, I don't know where we would be nowadays without it. In a recent study demonstrated that between December 2020 and 2021, in one year, they estimated that about 14 million people life were saved by the vaccine. I think it's fair to say that if it weren't for Peter's discovery of lipid nanoparticles as a way of delivering mRNA, there'd be no COVID-19 vaccine. We would still be battling through this horrible pandemic um, and a lot of lives would be lost. If I can sum it up, he's a modern day hero.